O blue, come forth, O blue, arise, O blue, ascend, O blue, come in. Hello there. Uh, sorry, I thought this would be out about two weeks ago, but I've had difficulties and problems with this, that and the other. But welcome to Lithuania at long last. Uh, I'm recording this in Phoenix, of course. Phoenix, Arizona is the best place from which to look at Lithuania to start with. So, we're Hegelman Lithuanian, Lithuanian even, um, a very, very recently promoted club going into the second tier or the Pirma Liga of uh, Lithuanian football. Let's have a little bit of a look at what Lithuania and where Lithuania is first. If you have a squint at the map that should be coming up now, you'll see that it is kind of nestled at what we used to call, excuse me, at what we used to call Eastern Europe. It actually was a part of the Soviet Union for a long old period. We'll get to its history briefly in a little bit. But actually, if you measured Europe geographically from the steppes to Iceland, from uh, the north of Norway, or possibly even as far as Svalbard, down as far as Cyprus, it actually works out as being kind of the geographical centre, which is news to most people. Well, obviously not to Lithuanians, because obviously they know a lot about their country and they're very proud of it, and rightly so. Even though it's only a population of 2.7 million and a fairly small uh, footprint of 65,200 uh, square kilometres, it has made an impact in a very short period of time. Uh, depending on when you watch this, in two years' time or next year, um, 2021, either way, it celebrates uh, 20, sorry, 30 years of restored independence. The time has flown past quickly. I, got, I was lucky enough to be there back in 2000, again in 2002 and 2003, and I still don't believe that in any way that it's possible that that's 20 years ago. I feel like it's only a couple of months ago. Um, yeah, so Lithuania, first mentioned by name in about 1009, uh, and the alarmingly accurate, I think it was 6th of March or something like that, in the story about St. Bruno, within 100 years it was being referenced elsewhere, including in German, where it was called Litauen, Litauen which is basically what Hegelman is called. Hegelman Litauen is the name of the club, for want of a better term. It is a German name, not a Lithuanian name, because if it was a Lithuanian name, it would have been Hegelman Lietuva. But Litauen is basically the German for it. That's because the Hegelman company is a German company. Back to that in a little bit. Uh, yeah, King Mindaugas took charge in some time in around the 1250s. Uh, it became the Grand Duchy of Lithuania in, I think it was 1236. And from there, it went on to become basically, throughout the 14th century, the largest country in Europe of any kind. Now, in fairness, it's mostly duchies and uh, mini empires and what have you, but it became pretty colossal. It had a union with Poland in around the 1530s. It kind of ran Poland, I was always my impression, but bear in mind, I have a lot of Lithuanian friends. And that dissolved in about 1736, but not before it was the largest empire in on continental Europe. And I believe it stayed that way in the post-Roman era, right up until the Nazis. And speaking of them, so it kind of became consumed, as these countries do, uh, I think it was by Russia chiefly initially, and it uh, achieved an independence for the first time in 1918. Then the Soviets took over in 1940, then the Nazis took over in 41, then the Soviets took back over in 44, and in the 1990s, they were the f it was one of the first, country, uh, first parts of the Soviet Union to seek independence. Uh, they and their fellow Balts and Nords, I suppose, in uh, Latvia and Estonia, uh, started demanding independence. There's, they're very proud of their singing revolution in Lithuania. And while they achieved their independence a little later, they were the first ones to come properly knocking for it. 
I've made the pilgrimage to the TV Tower. One of the things you do traveling what was the old Eastern Bloc of Europe is you go to the local TV towers because, uh, in the capitals because that's generally where independence or at least a step forward from Soviet rule by locals or uh, by remote from Russia, that's normally where it happened, the local TV tower. And if you go to some of them, you will see the bullet holes and you'll see the placards to the, um, the murdered and the martyrs. Independence in 1991 was remarkable. Uh, it changed the nature of the place. Previously, it had been sort of like a buffer zone in many ways between Russia and the rest of the world in some senses. But it's now been able to become uh, remarkably swiftly a very, very important player, uh, at least regionally. Of course, they're frightened. Who isn't frightened of Russia? Or rather, I should say, the people I used to know were a little bit worried, and that was before Putin. Now, I mean, based on my experience in Finland, they probably have a right to be frightened. Uh, joined the EU in 2004 in May, on May 1st, and on March 29th, that same year, they joined NATO. So they're probably frightened now from the other side at this point. Um... Never, footballing-wise, they've not achieved very much. Uh, I think Ireland was one of the first countries to play them in the qualifiers for either the 94, I think it was for the 94 World Cup in 1993. We beat them fairly handy. I think there might have been a John Aldridge hat-trick somewhere along the way. But, you know, football wasn't their thing. Traditionally, given that Lithuanians, again, going with the cliche, tend towards the taller as most Balts do, uh, it tended to be more of a basketball part of the world. But that's changing. And let's have a look at how that's changing by looking very, very briefly at the history of Hegelman. So uh, you can see I've got the fixtures coming up here. Uh, let me small down my big, big head so you can see a little bit more of this. Or actually, let me just remove my head for a moment. Whoops, that's the wrong thing to remove. This is the thing. Whoop. Three guesses a penny, eh? I can get rid There we go. You don't need to see any of that head. So, Hegelman, Lithuanian. Uh, formed in 2009. Uh, Hegelman, Litu uh, Hegelman was a big transport, is a big transport company uh, based in Germany. Anton Hegelman is the guy who's running it. And he has basically built a mini empire. I think he's formerly East German. But uh, he built a mini empire shortly after the fall of the Berlin Wall of transport. And I think they call it transport solutions these days because, you know, classy. In Lithuania, the local branch with the German name, Hegelman Litauen, uh, as it is, they set up a sports uh, organization, founding a football team in 2009. They trundled their way up to the third division, didn't do too well, didn't do too badly, formed an arrangement with Jalgris, uh, the other big Konus team. Uh, this is a, a team from Konus, by the way. Uh, but they formed an alliance with them, got up to the second tier, came back down, became, I think they described it as independent. And since then, it has been uh, jumping on. They got promoted back up to the Pirma. And this year in real life, well, have a look at the table there. Seventh, I think, is it? I don't have it in front of me. My internet is down. And I did the whole thing, recorded the whole thing, about 40 minutes of this before, and it's all lost. So let's not worry about that. Either way, they finished way better than expected and may possibly have an opportunity to move on. This should be a picture right now of the uh, NFA Stadionas, which is where they play. It's got a capacity of about 1,000, roughly speaking. They share it with a couple of other teams, I'm sure. It's really the National Football Association's Academy in Konus. I believe there's one in pretty much all the different cities around. Konus, for what it's worth, is 
probably the second city in the country after Vilnius. But, I mean, I'll let the people who are watching from Konus and from Vilnius fight over that. We all know Klaipeda is best. That's a little bit about who we're at and where we are. I think now would be probably a good time for me to put my big head back in, to shrink it down a little bit, put it back in again. Oh, I am a master of OBS at this point, as opposed to IBS, which is something I don't want to master. And let me see how much are we in. We are 10 minutes in. Good. I had initially just done a long chatter and there was no game, but now we're going to have a game. Uh, first, very quickly, I may have a screenshot that I'll put up of the original squad. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. Uh, there are a few holes. There are a few good spots. If we look at the transfer history, you can see that I haven't really brought anybody in. These two were my best players, and they arrived before I did. So I got in four since. Malashevich was a, is, is a right back who's okay because we had literally none. But Barnauskas, Barnauskas is so much better that Malashevich is probably going to go down in history as being a poor signing. Kazbaris is a goalkeeper, handy, but he's sort of for the future, as you can see, 19 years old, great potential. But I'm not going to worry too much about him. I should have shown you Baranowskis. Look at that. That's a good player, that is. And to my amazement, uh, Samsonic, which is a great name, Samsonic, that's a brilliant name, is uh, after signing for me. He seems to be so much better than I'm due. And he's a hundred, only 100 uh, yos a week. That is for nothing. He will be gone at the end of the season, if not the middle of the season. But that should give us a lot of stability. Uh by and large, we have a, uh, where's the one? We have a fairly solid midfield. Looking at the depth, well, let's look at all positions. Uh, no, that's the one I'm looking for. We now have a couple, I mean, we have a couple of passable strikers. Nobody on the left, really. Uh, what I believe is Chesinovicius is, uh, a pretty decent attacking uh, right mid. Got a couple of okay uh, attacking mids. I'm not using that. Nobody again on the left. Actually, they look worse on the left than they were. Baranowskis looks also worse than he was. Um, we had uh, these three boys. They were okay. But you add in uh, Samsonic and all of a sudden that is quality. Uh, Roussis is a pretty decent handy player to have for changing it up and going with a defensive mid. A couple of passable centre halves. Zalekis, Nines, Nainis, and Sirvada, Sirvidas. Sorry. And then we got uh, Zagorsk, uh, Zagorskas and Baranowskas. Probably the most likely boys on the two fulls. Um, dynamically speaking, they like me, for the most part, but, you know, what's not to like? You can see, the goalkeeper and I are not getting on well, it's probably because I am making a point of, uh, smacking down anybody who's trained less than a 6.5, and pumping up anybody who's trained more than a 7.0. There was lousy morale in here at the beginning, but we're a lot better now. So there's a little bit a snapshot if you want to take it. It's got the whole team there. Uh, I know my big head is in the way, but just believe me that uh, actually here's the way we do it. Uh, do we invert it? Yeah, we invert it. Now you can see the fellas that you couldn't see before. Isn't that wonderful? So moving on, tactically, this is my sort of go-to. This is the fallback position, so to speak. Obviously, I wouldn't have Samsonic there. Too good there, be wasted. I'm only operating off the two. 
Theoretically, Malshevich should be captain, but he's literally a wet week in the club, so we're sticking with the guys who are there already. I think, is there anything else? Oh yeah, finances. As you can imagine, Dyer had to expand the wage budget, and even then it was not still quite enough. But honestly, I think Samsonic is going to do the winning points on his own for the club, so he's worth the uh, $100 that additionally pumped me over. I already was. Oh, by the way, last time round, you may remember that I did the whole um, eating when I was in Finland, Finnish foods and what have you. I'm not in Lithuania, so I'm going to still try and do something. So um, in Lithuania, they like to drink alcohol and eat food. So uh, let's see. Let's try alcohol. Yes, alcohol is good. And we'll very quickly try some food. Hmm. Food, also good. I recommend both those things. If you see a place that sells food or alcohol, try it out. Except you young kids, don't be drinking the alcohol until you're at least 12. Right, let's just go to the game. Oh, no, no. First, I really ought to show you where we're at in terms of expectations. So, season. Uh, I'm expected to keep the team competitive. As you can see, oh, we're expected to finish ninth now out of 13. I thought, oh, yeah. We're ninth favorite for promotion. You've got to factor in the fact that there's also two B teams here. So we're actually 10th, 11th, I think. We're favoured to finish 11th or 12th in the league. Nobody on the big team. Not a shocker, unfortunately, according to the club info. Uh, where is it? General is, we're expected to finish 11th. The club vision has us working within the wage budget. <coughs> And it has us being competitive and reaching the second round. Schedule-wise, our first round is against Vilnius, who are expected to be a better team than us. And our... Oh, we're favourites because we've got the home tie. We're starting off against uh, Kupiskis. Um, don't know them. We'll talk about them when we get to play them away. And you can also see our training has been against a couple, I think uh, Palanga is a top tier team and obviously Jalgris is a top tier team. This is, I can't remember if these are my tier or lower again, but Jalgris are a very reliably solid team, so I'm not unhappy about losing to them. Pleased enough with the 1-0 one win, one win against uh, Palanga. The other game's pretty acceptable as far as I'm concerned. Now we go on to play. Uh, ooh, that is not what I was expecting us to play in our first game. Away kit. And these boys, fairly solid. 4 2 3 1. You can see where we're at. On with the show. I'll see you when it's kick off. Okay, and here we come to a snowy pitch with blue lines. I can live with that. <clears throat> anyway, it'll be a bit exciting to try and see players' names at certain points. There is a coke, but I think the most important thing to note is their attacking mid is called Victor Hugo. Brazilian, of course, as that's how you do it. But I'm very happy to see that Victor Hugo is playing. Uh, as always, I tend to play slightly asymmetric with the asymmetric right wing. Oh, there we go. How is that a free kick? Offside? Uh, um, ooh, another early effort. Oof. Like I said, um, I tend to play asymmetric. I tend to be positive. And I... Well, that was a foolish place to try and kick the ball. And pass it on. Ooh. 
get a corner out of it, do we? No, free kick again. Uh, yes, generally speaking, fairly attacking, positive anyway. Can't remember if I'm currently on a buzz of uh, early crosses or feeding into the box. I tend to go back and forth on the two as a matter of course. But we'll see how it goes. First time in this tier. Kind of exciting. Uh, never managed in Lithuania in a real sense before. Let's see. No pressure. Let's see if I can say that to Baranowskis. No, I can only make a pig's ear of that. Oh, here we go. Corner for them. Cleared ineffectually. Oh, nice stop. Yeah, I'm not enjoying the uh, heavy snow in the way of everything. I'm also not enjoying the fact that they're having all the football at the moment in our ground. There we go. Needless to say, it's set to short passing, which is why we're getting all these nice long kicks. Oh, how's he not offside? This has been good. Oh, he's done well from those before. That's I do want to say I'm going to shout my head off to tell Barnowski, calm down. Uh, I'm firm, shout to boy. Nothing will calm a player quicker than having their manager shouting across the field at them. Mark my words. Or nothing will do nothing faster. Not a good cross. Although somehow he got there first. And it, uh, whew, that's Daskus is so much better keeper than the other players, he said. And I was thinking there for a moment we're going to see him let that go into his own net, aren't we? Yeah, these long balls from the back are not doing very much now, are they? We're winning, the, we're winning second balls, but not from our own players. Oh, wow. That is an own goal for all time. Let us see that again. That was a an ambitious ball in bad weather. I mean, that he had a foot to kick with. But, oh, wow. That's a bit special. Eric, that one's for you. Okay, we're now in second. Dizzying heights for Hagelman. Can we, can we get another one? We can get a corner at least. I found this on the web. Go away, Google thingy. Oh, that wasn't a bad corner. I only thought to finally put the corners together, like after the last friendly, so oops. I wonder if it's Stradolovus was the man who put the corner in. Or put the cross in that led to the goal. We may never know. But this is going okay so far. Certainly better than the last time I did this. So minus four degrees Celsius. For Americans, that's very cold. Maybe what? 27, 28, 26, somewhere along there. Conservatus. Uh, not great. Go on, miss it, miss it, miss it. Sopots. Okay, we still have the ball. It's amazing what a goal will do, especially if we're not the ones who, who actually did the scoring of the goal. And that amounted to nothing. Oh, half time. So, second to Minija. 
Minilla and the Traore. So let me guess. Is it? Is it? No, he's Ivorian. Or maybe it's that is it is Iv the Ivory Coast is where uh, most of them come from. But there have been a lot of Traores in football lately. So we've struggled for possession in their half, but we didn't don't need to with them scoring against us. Are scoring for us. Hardly conceded free kicks. Good conversion of movement. Now. Paulius Baroness. And presumably Yevjangis. Uh, Kazura. They're players we need to keep an eye on. Doing all right. More shots on target. More shots. More shots off target. And just need the woodwork. No clear-cut chance, but two half chances. Shading on possession. Winning it on corners. Remember there was a time when they were talking about corners as a uh, as a way of measuring the winner of a game? Yeah, it was awful. 35 crosses attempted in the first half. That's impressive. It's, it's practically Eric Major impressive. And... Yeah, no, we're not outrunning them. That's interesting, because that's normally the thing I have us do. Otherwise, formations are presumably as they were. It's interesting, Victor Hugo is not playing great. Tamulevicius, Tamale, not playing great. That poor on the wing, especially on the left. I have no... Oh, sorry, especially on my left. I, of course, have nobody on my left, but... Let's see what we can convert that into. Summary advice. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, we're definitely doing the better here today. It was Stradlovas sent that cross in. I remember it distinctly being the number 10. It'll take me a while to get all these bits and pieces, but, you know, we'll get there. Eventually, let's put things out to the side. Let's try and work things into the box. And try going shorter again, see if that message gets to anybody. Uh, dressing room talk. Things are going well, but we could do better. And one player reacted. Huzzah. Okay, praise time. Now, some of these bios. Can't remember the line. Fours have chores and threes get trouble. Um... Threes of fleas, maybe? I don't recall. So, Samsonic is already earning his crust. Just putting in a decent living. I'm not happy with your performance today. Yeah, he's a really good player. He's our captain, but, you know, he's not playing well. Simple as. It's like player... Uh, I don't know what that's meant to be. Just go for the generics. And in attack. No pressure. And no reaction. Well, we'll see how that goes next time. Let's start her up and finish it off, hopefully. Be nice to finish the first step with a win undeserved in some senses as you could argue it is look mm, not terrible oh, excuse me oh good heavens that was not good Apologies for the uh, yawn. The boy was ill last night, so I spent up 
Uh, that's how I felt this morning. I spent the uh, practically all the night up with him, dealing with his little needs. Oh, that's that's shocking. That's shocking. Defending. Who's to who's to blame for these boys being able unable to defend? Here's where we get the second one quick. Oof. Let's put on a little bit of request for concentration. I somehow have the feeling that even though we don't have many tall players, and we really don't, got a couple of 185s and that's it, I suspect somehow we are a team that will score a lot of headers. Not sure why. Mm. That's a Vasco save. That's not saved with other players in this league. Oh, and that's a Daskos miss. Sloppy. Who's getting a boot? Who's not playing well? Slambakov. You're going to be the first off. Ready made for the roll. Anyone else needs to come off? Okay. Don't have another midfield thing on, so if we brought off Baranowskis and brought in Oh, I didn't put Mal Malshevik on the uh Yeah, I didn't do that. Well that will just have to bite me on the rear end. Hmm. Change him for the meantime. Let me get back out here. That leaves me with. Uh, one sub left, as in most civilized leagues. The uh, oh, that's good. Oh, I've gone blank on what I was going to say, but either way, we need to get a goal back. That's what I was meant to do. Is fiddle with tactics as well, but we're playing nice football. Low. Uh, a bit too low. Oh! That could have been glorious. It wasn't, but it could have been. Ball back to the defender. Not helpful. Honestly, two in defeat in the first game wouldn't be a complete disaster. Clearly, oh no, 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 that would be a complete disaster. <sighs> nice movement. We've clearly not got the 
structure yet for uh, the running and maintaining of maintaining of a uh, competitive team, but still. Oh, that so deserved a goal. That was disappointing. 66. Anyone else need yanking off? Hmm. Let's shout at them. You are happy soldiers. Demand more. Here we go again. So we're having the lion's share. Well, lion's share. We're having the better of the game, but only marginally. A draw would be a fair result. Oh. And that's our first goal of the season that we've scored. Yeah, we've got a striker taking corners. Not ideal. But, you know, when they come as good as that, doesn't need to touch the, ball, the ground until it's the other side of the net. Can we push on? Should we push on? Hmm. There are two defenders scored. I'll take that. I'll take that till the proverbial cows come home. So close. Point will be very acceptable for our first game. No, not like this. Uh, that's gone. No. Why did we do that? Oh, God. That's why we did it. These rubbish. There we go. What uh two two. Not a terrible game, not a brilliant game by any means. Their best player was much better than our best. Our worst player was worse than their worst. Let's see what the stats say. Average rating. We did better. Around the same kilometerage. So, we'll probably come back for the Nevesis game. That sounds like a good one to me. Other than that, I'll go and get these boys kit off. And thank you for watching. See you again sometime soon. Bye.